Good morning, artists, or good afternoon, whatever it is where you are. This is the picture of the little ducky that I am going to paint for you. It's a study in yellow, and um, yellow's complement is purple, so my darks are going to be primarily a purple. Uh, if I used just ultramarine blue, we'd have green. We don't want that. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to do a background. You've seen the final picture, so you already know. So you have one over me. So anyway, I've outlined, I've, I've drawn in the duck. I have put the tape around my picture. I like to do that so that I have um, nice straight edges. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's a little thing, but I like it. And I am going to put in, I want, I want this to glisten like he's in a sunny day with water around him and he's a little damp. So I'm going to put a few little white misket bits on his bill, in, on his bill here, in his eyes, and um, also in his reflection in the water. So let's get going. There are various misquits in the world. The one I'm going to be using today is Pebio Drawing Gum. This is a, a, a substance very akin, quite akin to rubber cement. And uh, you, you use a brush or a tool, like a toothpick, the end of your um, brush, uh, whatever you like. This is a, called a color shaper. Uh, this is a little rubber tip tool that you can use to apply the Pebio because the masking fluid if you use a brush you're probably going to ruin that brush for painting so i have one brush i've dedicated to it for large uh large spaces but this is just little teeny tiny bits so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna use my shaper for this one when you erase misket or masking gum or masking fluid. You can use your finger to rub it off. I put this little line right here down where I don't want it. So the other thing to use is a gum eraser. I think that's what they call these. It's a flexible, weird little thing. <laughs> anyway, it takes it off. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do them in sections. I'm gonna start by laying down a wash and working from light up to dark. So I'm going to start with his head here. And I'm going to start with my lightest yellow, which is going to be Hansa or lemon yellow. And that is going to be the lightest value on any of this, except for those spots that I I put, I uh, kind of masked, I, well, I didn't kind of, I masked them with a misket. So starting with my Hansa especially where the sun shines. No good, I have green in there. So I'm just gonna lay this down. Doesn't need to be as, I tend to go a little more intense with my colors than I need to, but yeah, that's just my style. And everybody has theirs, this is mine. So now into that wet wash, I'm going to put some gamboge and some Indian yellow. Indian ye gamboge is a little warmer hue, and Indian yellow is a little redder. So I'm going to get gradual colors in our little ducky here. But there's going to be a little bit of that hint underneath of the, of the lemon yellow, so that'll always be there. So there's a little bit of the gamboge. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the Indian right on his cheek. I think I'm going to go next to his reflection. And I'm going to do the same thing with that, but I'm going to have it be a little bit darker, a little, a little more of the gamboge. That's going to be greatly shaded, so um, actually I think I might do all gamboge. It's 
So this does not have any lemon yellow in it at this point. This is all gamboge. Yeah, that's good. Now while we're letting that dry, we have to look at, we have to keep an eye out on what's going on up here. And I do want to make sure that this Indian yellow is quite noticeable up here. So while I'm letting this dry, I'm gonna go right into my um, very, very pigmented mix, very little water on my brush of the Indian yellow, and I'm gonna start on his beak. See, it's very, it's almost chalky-like. It's very thick. So I'm gonna do his beak with just this color and water. Got to control those drips coming down from the ferrule. Although again, this is gonna be a lot in shadow, but I want a little bit, a little bit right around here. And I think I want to make sure that there's a little more definitive line of this color right here. Good, all right, now we'll let that dry. A little hair dryer action and we're back on track. So I think I'm going to next go for this bit back here. Again, same, same technique, we wet first. I'm gonna add Hansa yellow, then a little bit of gamboge. I might not add any Indian red to this, but let's see how it goes. Putting the darker color on the edges makes it look like he's going around, and that's exactly what we want. And he also kind of comes a little bit around to the front here, too, so we can put some there as well. And that's all we need to do for that. For now, I'm going to be adding more to it later. Next, I'm going to do this segment to the left of his head. I'm going to turn it around to do that. Because I'm right-handed and that makes it work better for me and I'm going to try to avoid his eye I mean the, the wet part here because it is still a little bit wet the wet again I don't want to touch the parts that I've up oh, and I did <laughs> as I'm saying I don't want to touch the parts that are wet I did touch a part that's wet but that's all right that's light and it won't be a very big deal so again this is going to start with the Hansa and um, then I'm going to add some gamboge. And on this one, because it is in front of his head, um, it is, along with his beak, the most forward piece. I am going to add some gamboge and probably some Indian yellow. I might also do a little bit right up here. Because this is going to be in his shadow, and so we want some of that to be warm. And that's that for now. Now we let that dry, and then we're going to do this part. All right, these don't really touch, so I'm not even going to worry about this whole top duck, you know, the main duck, totally drying. I'm just going to go in here and leave that separation. I think this is dry enough now, yeah. I can go up here. Oopsie, did I touch it? Some, this is where his highlights are on his chest, so I wanna pull a little bit out of that. Keep that a little lighter. But then I'm gonna add a little bit of Indian yellow. I got quite a glob on there.
So I wanted to test my color combination. So I made a purple out of ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, and then I tested it with my Hansa yellow. And it makes a nice neutral gray shadow color. So I'm real happy with that. I'm going to use that color as my shadow. So I think our little ducky is dry. Now I'm going to switch over to my number six silver black velvet and purple and start putting in the shadows. So it's not just shadows, it's shadows and uh, dark feathers. So he's got a shadow here. But this will start giving us the impression of our little duck. He's got this little band of black that comes down here. kind of comes down over here a bit. Do a little bit in here too. So I'm just blend, what I'm doing is I'm blending some of the Indian yellow into the purple to give it a little more integration, the one into the other. nice and deep up here but look, having those other colors like you can still see the yellows the different yellows underneath and it just gives it a really nice it gives it depth is what it does so what I'm doing is I'm looking over at my um, reference photo as you see me kind of change angle here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this that I did before. I'm gonna take some Indian yellow and I'm going to use it to blend into the purple. Give it a nice, dark, deep sense, if we can keep the water from Dripping. Yeah. And then he's got a nice dark shadow up here. Goes all the way from his little beak.
So I've added Indian yellow here to sort of bring out the yellowness of his face a little bit more than it was showing there. Yeah, that's more or less, I just pulled out a little bit there. All right, so now we've got him kind of looking duckish. And I have to go make something a little blacker. What do I make my black out of? Generally out of QBO and ultramarine blue. Because there's a lot of orange in this and the opposite of orange is blue, the opposite color of orange is blue, ultramarine, pure ultramarine might be a good option here. I'm gonna get my little uh, sample sheet and check it out. So here are my little tests of ultramarine blue on top of the yellow and purple, and then ultramarine blue on top of the um, Indian yellow. This makes a little green. Now these were blended wet. These, this was a glaze on top of a dry. And as you see, it didn't disrupt any of the dry paint here, but here it did mix in with the Indian yellow. And it has turned a bit of a green, and I don't like that. So. I'm either gonna to have to glaze the blue alone or find a different mix. I think that the, uh, the dark black is my answer, the QBO and ultramarine. Meanwhile, I wanted to get some strokes of pretty pure Indian yellow in here in, in just some of the really sunlit sparkly spots. Let's see if I can add a little more depth to his beak, a little more interest here. Okay, all right, now I think I'm gonna get a little bit of that black and start on his shadows. All right, because it's so fun to do the eyes, I'm just gonna start dropping those eyes in there. Make sure I don't have any extra water on my brush that's gonna drop on there. So. Black just, I mean, once you do the eye, all of a sudden the piece starts to come alive. This is where we spend a bit of time. So we got little teeny tiny hairs, we're doing one at a time. We wanna spread them out a little bit more as they get up toward the top because for one thing, it's getting sunnier up there. So we wanna make sure that we have a little more brightness, a little more yellow, a little lighter tone, fewer of the black. Again, we're gonna do the little teeny tiny hairs.
And notice how the darker we get here, the more the rest of it pops. So, putting on your first colors, you should go for a medium tone. Leave the, leave the highlights out as always, but um, you'll decide how dark things need to be as you go. You don't necessarily know right off the bat. And as you add the darks, then you, then you determine, ah yes, that needs to be lighter or that needs to be darker. Sorry, I said that so low. I didn't want that little part under here to be that dark. That's supposed to be just a little hint of a shadow, certainly not that huge blotch. Okay. I like that. I think that's doing pretty well. Now what else do we need to do? Okay, now it's time to attack his shadow. I'm going to start with his eye. Get that black. If I can still see where it was. Got a little bit of this black thing going down here, and then expanding out into here. Can't really see his nostril because it's sort of on the top here and on the bottom here. So. darkness here that sort of comes out of this shadow and then we want to sort of sort of does that and goes like that. I want to add a little bit of yellow into here. Okay. Ooh, dark. I'm not sure this is going to do it. Goes all the way up. Edges, edges, edges. And don't be afraid of the dark.
the most detail and the most um, contrast in terms of value needs to be at the focal point. And that could be a one inch square. Um, you're the one who determines where that is and how you've defined a little black here. Again, contrast. Um, so when you, when you get to the final part of your picture, this is where you add your highlights and lowlights. And so your darkest darks go in now and your lightest lights. And you decide where they go. And here, but just a little. So I'm gonna take some of that off and some of that off. So that's watercolor for me, putting it on and taking it off. Now the question is, do we need any, any water around him? All right, I have decided I'm gonna add a little bit of blue. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna take just a clean brush with plain water. I'm gonna add some ripply kinds of lines on the paper. And then I'm going to drop in some water. I'm going to try it on one side first and then see about the other. All right. We'll see what happens. And because I've already used ultramarine blue, I'm going to continue to use ultramarine blue. Not a terribly dark version of it, kind of watered down. And because I can't see it, I don't really know where the water is. So we'll see what happens. Do I want to do it on the other side? Yeah, probably. Why not? This is the shady side, so this can be a little bit darker, especially under there. So what do we think? I kind of like it. I think I might want to soften some of these. I think that's our little ducky. Now we gotta wait for it to dry, and then we get to remove the mask. So as I'm watching this dry, I'm always looking at the edges, and I don't want you to miss this part because this is kind of the, the, the touchy-feely, make it just a little bit better part. So I have some titanium white on my palette, and I look and, and I look at the picture and think, okay, where would I like a little more, as I'm waiting for it to dry so I can take off the mist kit, mind you. Where would I like a little more glisten? Where would I like a little more shine? And so I'm looking at those spots and I'm thinking, well, 
I'd like this to be a little brighter. So I'm putting on just a little couple of strokes of titanium white. This is, remember when I said do the highlights and the lowlights? So the, these are the highlights. The lowlights are the darks. The highlights, well, that's what these are. Highlights are the light spots. So this little guy has wet feathers and those droplets are sticking to him. And where they stick to him, the sun is reflecting off them. So he's got little white parts of him that are glistening. And if we don't get that glisten, we lose some of the beauty of this picture, in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing now. And I didn't want you to see the picture later and go, wait, what did we miss? What did we miss? So very, very selectively, I'm adding a little bit of glisten here and there. Nowhere near where his miskit is, though, because that's going to be attended to once the miskit is removed. But his beak has a little bit of shiny spot there. And some there, and there's already a little miskit there, so I know he's going to have a little glisten there. And same with his beak here. Um, what else? Maybe another couple of feathers down at the waterline. And then that's probably going to be it. Sometimes you have to go over these more than once because the titanium white will activate some of the paint underneath, the water in, in your brush will. And it'll start to bleed through. So... You may have to come back and redo these, but that's all right. You're tough. You're an artist. You can do it. Now, this is never going to be... Well, I say that. It's hard to make this as white as the paper. It's always best if you can leave the paper, but sometimes, for me at any rate, I'll just neglect a piece that, in retrospect, I should have masked. And... So I'll go back. I am not afraid to use this white. All right, let's see if we can get rid of this mask. And see what we've got under here. Hope it's dry. Did I get this out? Not quite. Okay. All right. So, I think that's it. And now what you got to do is you can't just leave these like this. You, you really do have to, um, some of these need to be covered over. This one, for example, all of these. We like it to glisten, but we don't want it to look like we just got the mess off of there. So let's just kind of cover these over a little bit. Especially because they're in the reflection. Yeah, it's paint. <laughs> This one, I just want it to be a teeny bit, teeny bit smaller. And I want to get rid of this part right there that I put in with the titanium white. I think that's, you know what, I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine to that. Just plain ultramarine. Here. And I'm gonna pull a little, I'm gonna tone this down a little bit. Emphasis. 
purposes. All right, I think he's done. What do you think? Hope you'll join me next time.